Hey everybody, welcome into the at Flippin' Hippo's YouTube channel. I'm Star the Flippin' Hippo. Today is June 25th and it's a Thursday. Let me see. Oh, wow. So awesome. Thank you so much for the $5 super chat, Diane Collier. Nothing like coming live to a super chat waiting for you. That's awesome. Thank you. Um, welcome in, Diane. And Mary is here. Happy Thursday. John Amy, the Nebraska Hanger, Rhonda and Amelia are here. Welcome in, ladies. Um, you'll have to excuse me as I try to become less discombobulated. We just walked our packages up to the post office. Um, it's not that far. It's a couple of blocks. I like to go to get the fresh air and the exercise, um, but I didn't realize that it is, like, hot out there. It is like Satan's home. <laughs> So I'm a little sweaty and like gross, but it's better than freezing in snow, right? Chris is here. Charissa, Carissa, I don't want to say your name wrong. Greg is here. Lori, welcome in. Um, our eBay sales are good. Let's knock on wood. I kind of feel like a couple days every week we feel that slowdown, like, oh, we didn't have that many sales. And then they're a little like someone opens the floodgate and it, or the faucet, however you want to say the expression. We had um, 16 go out today. 16. Um, Poshmark is really slow, but that's because we're not doing what we should be. So if you want to make a lot of sales on Poshmark, you have to do certain things. Um, I have tons of videos on it. Um, and we just, we've kind of been letting that slide to the wayside because we have a lot of other things on our plate right now that um, take our time and probably make more profit. So Poshmark's almost always the first thing to go when we don't have time for everything. So if you're not doing what you should be doing on Poshmark, you're not going to make the sales. I have been cross-posting like a madman. I'm still using List Perfectly's bulk option. Um, I have been like um, moving just like 500 to uh, about 500 probably 600 things a week i'm trying to get our entire ebay store over to poshmark so i'm doing a lot of that and the days where i'm heavily cross posting i see a lot of sales but we're not really we are still sharing but not three times a day only about half the closet each time we share because there's so many items on there now um but it's one of those do as i say and not as i do don't don't do as i do or your poshmark sales will dry up right Um, Nova and the Frog are here, guys, with the wrench. That's Bill and David. Say hi to them. Very good friends of ours. Um, Tammy's here. What's up, girlfriend? Um, so we sell on eBay, Poshmark, Grailed, Macari, Amazon. We do local. We also do wholesale sales on Shopify with um, our partner, Casey, the Rockstar Flipper. Um, we are actually very diversified. Posh is slow, and I'm doing most of what I'm supposed to be doing. Hmm. Thanks for putting up that link, David and Bell. Um, oh, Jamie says, hello, my favorite YouTube person. That makes my day. Thank you. You guys are so cool. Um, I do not do Etsy because Etsy is specifically for um, vintage and or handmade items. We don't do enough vintage to justify adding another platform yet. Um, I don't know that we ever will ever do enough vintage to justify it, but also I don't, I can't, if you put me in a room with no food and at gunpoint and said, you have to craft your way out of here. I wouldn't, I would not make my way out. I cannot craft. I'm not a crafty person. So Etsy's not for me, but if you have a lot of vintage or you craft or make stuff, um, my friend Sydney, you guys probably know Sydney, the posh, posh, posh boss. Sydney is making a killing with homemade masks because she's very crafty, very talented, and she's been hand sewing or sewing on a sewing machine um, masks since the beginning of C19, and she is doing really well for herself. So, um, And I know that Vicky and Katie do a lot of vintage over there. All right, guys, let's jump into the haul video. I don't have a lot to show you because we were very – um, cherry picky when we went to Goodwill. We went to one Goodwill last Sunday, um, just the one right up the road. My favorite one where they have the 50 cent plush and um, 
I have a friend who works there, not like a close friend, but she works there. I've gotten to know her. We are now friends on Facebook and we talk and she's very nice. Um, they know we're resellers up there. We've created kind of a friendship and a relationship with them. Um, I advise doing that if you can. It really helps. Um, I feel like some stuff ends up in the 50 cent bin that doesn't, wouldn't always end up there if she didn't know me. You know what I'm saying? Um, so we went there. We just went to the one. We were very cherry picky. If you follow me on Instagram, you probably saw on Monday the picture of the three huge boxes. We just got a ton of wholesale in um, that we purchased for ourselves to list one by one, not that we're selling. We do sell wholesale on the Shopify and sometimes directly. Um, and sometimes we just buy direct lots. Like you guys saw me buy the plush lot from Greg um, at the beginning of the shutdown. And then um, we had another wholesale lot that you guys probably saw the Janko jeans and stuff from. Um, so we just got another one. Um, I mistakenly spoke on Instagram and said it had shoes in it. The guy didn't send the shoes yet. So this guy is like getting rid of his entire eBay store. It's like 1500 items and he's sending it out around 150 to 200 at a time. Um, some to us and some to Casey in Florida because we did split the cost of this and we're splitting the inventory. Um, so the first batch came here and it didn't have the shoes. I thought it was going to have the shoes. It didn't have the shoes. I don't know if they're going to go to Casey or not. I guess he's just pulling stuff. He's pulling it down from his store and packing it up and sending it out um, in boxes, like 150 to 200 at a time, whatever the guy can get in there. Um, and then he's alternating some to us, some to Casey, some to us, some to Casey. So this didn't have any shoes, but had some really good stuff in it. Um, I'm going to show it to you guys tomorrow. Not, uh, not all of it. There's so much. I have actually like just a pile I've picked out to show you. Um, but we'll talk about that. My goodness, my phone is always just being a turd. And I don't like to not have the sound on because I like the chichings when I'm live. But um, what was I going to say? Oh, so I will be back tomorrow um, with those. I don't know what time. Kind of depends on what time I wake up and... Um, function and get stuff done we like to do shipping and stuff um oh thank you so much for the super chat greg i appreciate it guys look that's greg there with the super sticker with the um hippo that's greg who i got the whole cell from he also sent me a whole bunch of plush for my birthday in may which i really appreciated I've been working my way through i'm listing them um so i'll be back tomorrow with clothing i just totally got off top way track but who cares it's part of my charm right you guys know i talk too much uh i went to one goodwill on sunday we got um we had an extra discount thing they were honoring from they hand out scratch cards like lottery cards sometimes at our goodwills i don't know if you guys get those too and they give you like an extra percent off or something um we had one that expired it was for it was for it was for St. Patrick's Day, um, and then the shutdown happened. So they're kind of like trying to still on honor those for people. So we had an extra discount. So we got a total of 27 items. We paid $20.49. $20.49 for all 27 items. That comes out to $0.76 cents an item. So we got three pieces of clothing. I'm going to show you that. And the rest of everything we got was plush. So three pieces of clothing and then 24 plushies. So let's look at the clothing first, just real quick. Like I said, it averaged out to 76 cents a piece, but the green, nope, I'm a liar. The green was full price because I have two greens here that were full price. The pink was 99 cents. So um, the pink was 99 cents. These started out at, look how expensive our Goodwill can be. $8 they wanted because they're new at tags. They usually start all their jeans at $6.99. You've heard me say that. That's what I pay for silver. But they wanted eight for these. But they did go on the 99 cent sale because they were pink. You guys, they're one of my favorite red and butter brands. And they're new. I'm going to sing about it because I'm excited. So the MSRP there, 
if it would come into focus is about 50 bucks. So I will probably list these for about 35 to start. They're um, American Eagle 360 Next Level Stretch. They're size 10, which is pretty average. But they're still new at tags. And they're black, by the way. They're not blue jays. Okay, so those were 99 cents. <clears throat> I did pay $6.99 for these. This is what gets me about my goodwill, though. Yours, too, probably. American Eagle knew with tags they wanted $8 for originally, right? But seven for all mankind knew with tags. They were letting go for the $6.99 originally. Who prices these? I don't know. Anyway, these are new with tags also. The bath one ripped off, but that's okay. I'll just photograph it. Um, the MSRP on these is not on here, but I do have other seven for all in my closet that are new, like at 80, $90 closet store. Um, so I'm just going to cop these off myself. I really honestly can't remember what I started the new with tag seven for all mankind's at in my store, but I will look them up and comp these off of myself. These are the a pocket flare leg size 25. And then we have a quarter zip mock turtleneck. This is a really good brand. This is Peter Millar. You guys look for Peter Millar. We sell his sweaters. We sell um, sweater vests, sweaters, shirts, polos, button ups. It's a good brand and we will pay full price for this. Full price at our Goodwill for men's shirts starting is $5.29, and that is what we paid for this. This is a size large. It is wicking, like an active wear shirt, long sleeve. Like I said, it's quarter zip mock turtleneck. I think Keith will probably list that for about $30, maybe, a little more. Um, he's more familiar with what to comp or what to price Peter Millar at than I am. Um, let me mute a couple things on my phone before I go psychotic and tell some people about themselves. <laughs> I always try to smile after I say something snotty. All right. Let's see. Yeah, Peter Millar is really good. You want to look for him, um, especially like the silk shirts and the sweaters and stuff. And then the active wear is always good. All right. So we're going to get into the best part of this video, the 24 plushies. I hit Build-A-Bear heaven. Look, this whole bag is Build-A-Bear and they were all in the 50 cent bin together. Um, this is a Dairy Queen strawberry shortcake blizzard bear. Um, I did look it up and comp it. So, but I already forgot what it, I know it's a Dairy Queen bear. I know it's a strawberry blizzard, but I think it's a shortcake blizzard. Um, but it is a specialty build a bear for, for Dairy Queen. He's got the little blizzard on his foot. Isn't he cute? Or she? And then she's got all the collars in her, like the blizzard would have. Of course, she's got her build a bear tags there. And then the little blue paw print and red heart the little yellow tag you guys should be looking for i think i think i'm gonna put her up for about 2025 some of these i comp some of these i didn't um i was looking for stuff for the thrift battle i was in last night um this bear is going to be stripped naked before i sell anything reason being obviously this is iconic she was in the 50 cent bin. They wanted $2 for her originally. This is iconic enough that most of you can recognize um, Belle from Beauty and the Beast. This is her gold dress and then the rose. Um, but when I looked her up, there is a Belle bear made by Build a Bear, but she's a very light tan and I believe she had eyelashes. Since this is a dark bear, I don't believe this is meant to be the Belle bear. Someone just had a brown Build-A-Bear that they put 
the dress on, I can feel something in there. Feel something. I think this one talked originally or something because I feel hard things inside of it. I don't see anywhere to open it up to do batteries. But I'll sell this one separate just as like a plain brown bear. And then I'll sell the dress and rose separately. And I did look these up. They actually have whole kits that have a little bit more than mine. This is the dress and the rose. There's uh, some with like the mirror and stuff. But you guys can look those up if you're curious. Um, I'll have to um, comp my outfit based on how much mine has versus what the other ones have that are listed. Hey, Thrifty Chicka, welcome in. Um, oh, poor Tammy. Tell your popo hi for me. Give him a smooch. She's cute. Her dogs are cute. Um, and then I got this build a bear. This one has um, hearts on it. And look at his little nose. A little red heart nose. Of course, it's got the same tag you guys are used to saying. Um, this one um, is going to need a little bit of a bath. It's got some marks on it. So what I'll do is spray it with Awesome and let him sit overnight or, or a couple days. And then throw them in the wash and then air dry them. Don't put your plush in the dryer, guys. Ruins them. It ruins them. And I know I say that to you all the time. And I know there's people who come in and say, but I put mine in the dryer and low heat and they're fine. And that's great. But I have a friend who just um, found a jelly cat in the wild, one of the pink poodles. And its fur is absolutely destroyed because someone chose to put it in the dryer it's better safe than sorry, whether you think that you are magical and can put stuff in the dryer and it won't get ruined or not. <laughs> I wouldn't. It's better safe than sorry. It's not hard to set your Build-A-Bear in a line. Sorry, all your plush, not just Build-A-Bear. It's not hard to take the plush and just set them in a line on a counter on a table somewhere and just let them air dry. They're safe in the washing machine. If you're worried about their eyes, you can put a pillowcase or something over their, their heads or put them in a pillowcase to protect their eyeballs. And the washing machine is, is fine, um, but I would not put them in the dryer. I have seen too many plush get ruined and destroyed. It just happened like two days ago to my friend Donna, who found the jelly cat. I think she's in the chat if she wants to tell you guys who she is. Um, and I went off on a rant with her. I'm like, this is why I tell people not to put them in the dryer. <laughs> Don't do it. Just let them air dry. Um, but if your animals do have a lot of stains or whatever, I get this question all the time. Just spray them down with some awesome, which you can get at the dollar store. Donna's here. Hi, Donna. I'm talking about your poor jelly cat poodle. <laughs> um, so this is, I get it at the Dollar Tree. I bought this one time for a dollar. And then moving forward, they have a bigger bottle that holds enough to fill this two or three times, maybe even four, for the same price. So if you already have a squirt bottle, don't buy this. Buy the big old gallon size for a buck and just keep filling it up. You can use this on clothing as well. We use this for everything. I clean our shipping table with this. I use it on all my plush stains on clothing. Um, I've had it take out wine stains, coffee stains, blood stains, grass stains, mud stains, dirt stains. This stuff is awesome. This is the best ever. So, in fact, I will go ahead and spray my bear now. So just wherever his little stains are, I just spray a little bit like that and then just however long i mean it could be tomorrow or it could be a week from now he'll be fine with the awesome on him and then when he goes through the wash we use um Persil laundry detergent um only because it uh we wash everything that we thrift before we bring it in the house and so we just keep Persil around it um is a detergent that touts that it kills bed bugs and all of that good stuff you don't want to bring in. So that's what we use. Um, we have a big container of it for store stuff. And then um, on our personal items, we have um, tied with OxyClean. So sometimes I'll clean the plush with those because I've already steamed them before I brought them in the house. The steaming of the animals will um, sanitize and take care of bed bugs and dust mites and things like that. So he's already sanitized. He's just stained up. So a lot of times when I run my plush through the wash, they've already been steamed. So then I use the uh, awesome 
And then I use the Tide with the Oxy because it really cleans them really well and brightens them up. But all of our thrifted clothing before it comes inside does get washed with Persil um, and then put through dryer on heat to kill any stuff you don't want to bring in. Except for stuff that's new with tags and um, those we also steam. And the steam cleaner I use is behind me. It actually says on the box that it kills dust mites, bed bugs, and sanitizers. So... Um, yeah, don't put your plush in the dryer. I cannot stress that enough. And I know there's people that tell me they do it, and I'm like, you're a liar. <laughs> you're either a liar or you're magic. I don't know what you are. Don't do it. Don't do it. It's not that hard to just let them air dry. It's really not. That's some tough love about some plush there, guys. Don't put them in the dryer. You will ruin your friends. Um, yeah, I get it at the Dollar Tree, but I've heard other folks say that they get it at other dollar stores in their area. And you can also order it on Amazon. Like, if you don't want to leave your house for whatever reason, if you're still shut down or phasing things open um, in your state, if you have to wear a mask and you go out, you don't like to wear a mask and you'd rather stay in home and order it in, you can order it right from Amazon. I have links in the Facebook group you can use. Um, and then we get, like, a little percentage of the... Of the, of the sale costs you no extra, but we get a percentage and it helps us out. It supports our channel and what we do. Um, hi, Elizabeth. Welcome in. So this is another Build-A-Bear. I promise he is. He's not just a white tag. There we go. This is just a plain brown, um, black and brown bear. I'll sell him for about 18 or 19, or I'll list him and maybe take a best offer down to about 16. Another little plain, just brown, Build-A-Bear. Again, these plain ones like this, I stirred around 18 or 19 all the time. Um, most of the time, they'll move for that. But I'll go down to about 16 if they're just plain like that. Any of the special ones like that Dairy Queen one or um, this one, I'm going to want more like 2025. Um, you can look these up and comp them, and you will always see turds who sell these for 10 and 12 15 I don't care. I know what my plush is worth, and I like to price it for what it's worth. Um, and a lot of these specialty ones like this aren't too oversaturated, and I'm a patient person. So um, actually, there's two types of these Thin Mint Bears, you guys. Um, I believe last week I showed you a different one. It's listed in our store now. I just listed it this week. It was a light tan. The whole bear was like the color. That's green. Sorry. This one's green. The other one was light tan. And it just had a thin mint on its foot. It did not have the Girl Scouts of America's foot. Um, this one's darker brown and has the thin mints. So there's two kinds of Girl Scout thin mints bears. I did notice that when I was listing my light tan one. And then I found this black, this dark brown one. Um, there's not so many of them that I'm not comfortable. I'm, I'm comfortable listing mine for what I want. And then I can wait for the other ones to sell and I'll get my price. The other thing I should probably mention to you guys. Um, hold on. Sorry. I'm trying to do five things at once. The other thing I should probably um, mention a lot. Sometimes like I'll see three or four listed too low and I'll list mine and I'm like I'll just wait till those three or four sell right mine will sell anyway because there is a perceived value to items so if you have a Build-A-Bear a specialty one up for say 20 and everyone else's is at 10 or 12 and there's only two or three other ones and you're like I'm just going to wait patiently for mine to sell for 20 a buyer may can come in and see those other ones and immediately think something's wrong with them um, it is a perceived value to a lot of buyers. There are cheap buyers who look for cheap prices, but some buyers um, have that perceived value. Why are these ones over here so low? There must be something wrong with them. And they'll buy yours at the higher price. So you don't always have to be patient and wait for the other ones to sell. Sometimes yours will sell first because of that perceived value. Additionally, if you can take better photos than the other folks and you can use better keywords than the other folks, yours will sell first as well. I have done that so many times in the past where I've listed something way higher than everyone else has theirs up for and mine sold first. 
because mine's on the nice white professional background. Mine has the really good photos. I have really great keywords. I don't know how many of you have comped plush recently, but you'll notice that a lot of folks who sell plush at the cheaper prices have really dark photos without professional lighting. They'll have the animal on a very busy background, whether it's an ugly rug or the couch, or they'll have it laid on the floor or their bed, and it's just kind of dark. And if you can do nice, crisp, you don't even have to have the white background. Robert does not use a white background. He doesn't like it. He uses a different one, but he has the nice, like, professional lighting, and he does really good photos. If you have good photos like that with any kind of professional background, I prefer the white and recommend it for Google search, but I'm going to tell you Robert doesn't use a white one, and he does fine. Um, and the other ones are, like, thrown on the floor or couch. Yours is going to sell first. Yours has the perceived value. Yours looks better. And if you follow the formula you're supposed to be following in the titles and using keywords that are um, going to make yours sound more sought after, more valuable, then you're going to sell yours. Um, Rhonda and Amelia, we have the Thin Mint Bear and cannot seem to sell it for two years. Wow. Yeah, maybe retake your photos. I have the light tan one up. I think I just listed her either yesterday or the day before. I've been going through a lot of plush. Um, and then this brown one, will, I'll be photographing tonight. And it'll probably get up over the weekend. I finally caught a live show. I haven't seen you in forever. Guys, say hi to Bamboo Spine Gal. I have not seen her in a long time. Good to see you. Long time viewer. Um, Yvette just found a Build-A-Bear Leopard from the World Wildlife Fund. Would you price it? Yes, I would definitely price it higher than regular. Um, the World Wildlife Wild, Wild, the WWF, in addition to it being a Build-A-Bear, makes it more valuable. Um, leopards, I believe, are an animal that's, um, not as saturated. You guys, I talk about animals that are more rare. Um, yeah, I would definitely price that higher. Hey, believable blessings. So we got another bear we're going to strip. So all these bears that I showed you, all these builder bears I showed you were 50 in the 50 cent bin. I was so excited. It was like they dumped all the BABs in there, right? Here's just a plain white one. And I'll list him for about 18. I think he's super cute. He's so pretty too and clean he will not need a bath he is nice and white and pretty and just clean and soft and um this is what i stripped off of him a little football jersey so because this is just a jersey by itself i'll probably list it for about 12 bucks i don't know about the bell dress yet i want to go high on that but i only have the dress and the rose like i said i'm gonna have to go online and see the other um Build-A-Bear costume or outfit sets for Belle and what they're listed at and how much stuff they have in theirs. All right, you guys, one more Build-A-Bear. If you watched this, the thrift battle on um, Dominic's channel last night, this was my first item um, I did show, and it was the only round I won <laughs> um, for the whole battle. The only round I won was with this Build-A-Bear. Ooh, 10 cents. Awesome. Um, oh, thanks for the link there, David. List eBay perfect. I'm assuming it's David. David's usually the one that's listing the links. Um, so this is an official Build-A-Bear. This is a special Halloween cat. I did say last night I was going to list her for around um, 40, probably. 40 free ship or maybe I'll, or 50 free ship and 40 it's really high for this cat, but I feel like I can do it. The outfit does, in fact, come off. We were talking about stripping Builder Bears naked, and Dominic asked me um, if I would leave this outfit on and why. And I said I thought it was attached. It does come off, but I will leave it on. And why? Because this is clearly a black cat with orange paws and, and nose and ears. This is meant to be a Halloween cat. The only time I I do say you should not strip your bears and sell the clothes and animal uh, separately is when it's clearly part of like a theme or the character. This is a Halloween cat. So she will be staying in her little pumpkin outfit. 
And um, I just love her. I actually really want to keep her, but I'm going to, I'm going to let her go. I'm going to weigh her. If she's under a pound, I will do like 50, maybe 48 free ship. And if she's over a pound, I'll drop the price down to about 40, maybe 38 and add um, calculated shipping. I really like her. I'm like, I really like her. She is so cute. Um, I think when I comped her, there were a couple up for like 30 to 40, all in with shipping. And I'm going to go a little bit higher on mine. There's not that many. At least when I checked the other day, there weren't that many. Um, and I'm willing to sit on her until October if I have to. You know what I mean? Because I want that um, high price for her. And I'm going to have her in the office. She's going to be um, one of my animals that doesn't go upstairs into our inventory storage. She'll be hanging out down here with me on my desk because I really do like her. So she's going to be like my little friend that's going to hang out with me until she finds her new forever home. And she has purple eyes. I think I just, I might keep her. I don't know. I really like her. <laughs> Really like her a lot. Um, I have not ever found any of that stife. Or is it pronounced stife? I've never found it, John. I know it's a polo. I believe it's in my plush guide. But unfortunately, I've never found it. Not, And I have actually sourced in several different states. I've sourced in um, training. That explains the migraine this morning. Um I've sourced in Florida, South Carolina, North Carolina, um, several states between here and Florida. Like when we drove down there two years ago to Florida, we like sourced our way down. So they could project, no, uh, South Carolina, North Carolina, Georgia, maybe, Florida, Nevada, when we were out there for open. I've never found them. There's just some things that are on my bucket list that I just haven't found yet. Um, hey, Swimmerization's here. Welcome in. Welcome in. Um, so yeah, you really should. That leopard should do well. Leopards are popular, but they're not saturated. Elephants, owls, um, hippos, believe it or not. I, I feel like our animals that move quickly because there's folks that like them, but they're not saturated. Um, we found one stife bear and so just someone in California who was from Germany. That's awesome. Yeah, that black cat. I just, I love her. <laughs> I want to keep her. Thanks, Yvette. I appreciate that. That's very sweet of you to say. Let's highlight that. All right. So this other bag over here is the others. These are not Tilda Bears. I'm so excited about this one. Um, he, too, was in the 50 Cent bin. He is uh, Nintendo. And um, there's no year on his tag, which means he's not going to be vintage. 2003, I lied. There's a year <laughs> on the other side. Um, I got one Donkey Kong before, speaking of sourcing in Cal South Carolina. A couple years ago, I found a Donkey Kong, Donkey Kong plush in a South Carolina Goodwill for 25 cents. And I remember it selling for like maybe 20, 25 really fast it was fast so i'm very excited this is the only other donkey kong i've ever found um you guys these video game characters keep your eyes open for them they, they go fast and they usually go for good money especially if they have like the nintendo tags and such um a tiny staff bunny but she is in the death money pile not vintage um, ours wasn't vintage either. Even if they're not worth a lot, they sell fast. Yeah, there's some there's some plush that I feel is really worth sourcing because it it's fast. Not all plush is high dollar, but most plush is very extremely long tail. So even ones that'll flip for twelve to eighteen bucks, if I'm paying a quarter or fifty cents, and they're going to be some that move within a couple weeks, rather than sitting around forever, like most of them do. They just they just are very very long tail. Look at him. Y'all recognize him? This is Ziggy and friends. So excited that I found him. Um, he, I was going to see if he had a, a date. He's Nanco. 
Um, Ziggy by Tom Wilson. I don't know if you guys remember. 2006 is on the tag. I don't re know if you guys remember him or not, but he was a comic strip. So he's pretty cool. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, do you want to look for the World Wildlife Federation plush? They are definitely worth more money. And sometimes you'll find them. Um, Build-A-Bear makes WWFs. And sometimes Wild Republic will have them. Diana says, Star, can you talk about how you would reject an offer that's less than what you want to sell the item for? Um, I never decline, ever. Uh, when you counter an offer, um, it makes it have, it gets a free boost in the search engine. Um, Cassini, the um, algorithm of eBay likes activity and anytime an item is getting offers on it, it makes the item appear more desirable to Cassini. And so you get a free boost in the searches. Um, the only way I can say there's proof of that is I'm sure you guys have had low ball offers before and you countered it or it was sitting there waiting for you to counter or decline and it would sell immediately or very soon after that offer for full price to someone else. It's because any um, items that have offers on them seem more desirable and you get that free boost. Once you decline the offer, you lose that opportunity for that free boost of the searches. By declining the offer, you're not having the activity on the item that makes it seem desirable. Um, so I, I advise people to never, ever, never, ever, 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 ever decline. Um, I don't care if they send you an, a, an offer of a dollar, do not decline. If you take it personal and you feel butthurt, you're doing it wrong. Here's some more tough love for you guys. Um, your emotions do not belong in your business and you should not have any kind of emotions when it comes to business. And that includes offers from low ball buyers. When they send you a dollar offer and you take it personal and you get upset and you decline it, you're allowing your emotions into your business and you shouldn't be doing that. Um, it should be an automatic counter offer response from you that is robotic and completely emotionless. We counter every single offer we get with 10%. I used to always send a message with thank you for your interest in this item, but I don't so much anymore um, just because we're fielding so many offers all the time. They come in all day, every day, but we have like 2,400 items or so. Um, but just counter with 10%. That's it. That's all you have to do. It takes a second of your life to counter with 10% off and you're getting a boost in the searches and if you're doing this right and you're keeping your emotions out of it you're doing this just automatically like on autopilot like a robot offer counter an offer comes in counter an offer comes in you just counter it should be autopilot and you should not feel any type of way about it it's just business it's just people being people seeing what they can get from you seeing what they can get out of you so don't decline just counter with 10% off. Um, and I mean, there are times where like, clearly if they're coming up, if you know, every offer they're coming up 10 cents and they say final offer, um, you may want to decline at that point. But I usually don't even do, I just keep countering. If you're at your low point, keep countering that too. You don't even have to do a message with it. They're gonna get your point. If you want $45 for something, just tell them, this is my lowest I can go. Thank you for your interest and just keep countering that. They'll either go away or they'll buy it. Most times they'll buy it. Sometimes they'll come back. We have buyers all the time that tell us, this is my final offer. I'm not coming up to what you want. Okay, bye, Felicia. And then the next day they come back and um, they'll buy it because they realized they really wanted it. Um, Zingy used to read his comic every day when I was younger. <laughs> Um, yeah, you're going to sell stuff all the time right after low balls if you counter because it gives you that boost in searches. Um, sometimes we laugh at the crazy offers. Sometimes I do just kind of stop and think to myself, um, I don't understand what world these people live in that they think it's okay to offer as low as they do sometimes, but they do. Sometimes, yeah, they're just seeing what you're going to do. I've had folks offer me a dollar on 
ninety dollar whatever, and I go back with you know eighty, and they'll buy it. They're just seeing what they're going to get. And some people will send out a ton of lowball offers on, say, like they're looking for like a Ralph Lauren polo. They'll just send out a ton of five or six dollar offers on twenty different polos just to see who's going to bite. And unfortunately, there are sellers who are desperate enough or new enough and don't understand enough that will bite. And then so that buyer thinks, well, it worked this time. Let me try it again. I have bamboo spine gal says, sorry, I have a frog that makes a sound. It's not battery opted. It just makes a sound due to movement. Um, no, you wouldn't have any issue shipping him. I don't think. Now that I've said that, <laughs> um, but we've had plush before that um, make noise or sing, and they don't have the opening to take the batteries out. Um, I don't know. I, I've never had an issue. I kind of laugh to myself and think about it, though. Like, what if one of those poster workers was on like a, a graveyard shift in a sorting facility, and my plush started singing inside the bag or the box? <laughs> what do they think? Um, they had live chicks at the post office. All right, let's get back to the plush. Um, we got a My Little Pony. Mm -hmm. I've had her before, and I should remember her name, but I don't. But there's her little cutie mark. Did you know that? My Little Pony's marks are called cutie marks. So if you ever have a pony and you need to know which pony you have, you can Google cutie mark. Star, cutie mark, rainbow, cutie mark, lollipop, and it will tell you which pony you have. They are called cutie mark, C-U-T-I-E. So this is a My Little Pony. This one has cloth hair. I usually put that in the description if they have like this cloth hair. I'll say cloth hair in the title and the description. Just because some folks look for the ponies with the hair they can brush and play with. Um, a peep. I love peeps. I love peeps. I like the pink bunny peeps. And the yellow peeps. I like the peeps with the Easter bunny ears and the Santa hats. All the peeps. I always source peeps when I find them. They go for about 12 bucks, but they usually go pretty fast. So that's an example of a plush that moves quickly for bread and butter prices. I like the big peeps and the little peeps, the Mississippi peeps and, and the clean face peeps. What's that song? <laughs> I made myself think about that when I was like, I like the peeps with the hats and the peeps with the ears. Um. Awesome. Have to get back to work. Yeah. We're going to eat dinner as soon as I'm done with this. And then I'm going to photograph all these friends. So as soon as we're done here, I'm going to eat, I'm showing you a Yoda. And then I'm going to do a photo session with all these friends and try to get them listed by the end of the weekend. This is a Hallmark Itty Bitty. You can see it says Itty Bitty. I've had a few Itty Bitties before. I've had Harley Quinn, Batman, Tweety Bird, Bugs Bunny. And now I have a Yoda. There's probably been a couple others in my life. They typically move fast depending on the character, but not for very much. I don't know what this is. Some of y'all might recognize it and be able to tell me who this is. Had Disney on the tag and that's good enough for me. Even if I don't recognize the character, if it's from Disney, I bring it home and I will figure it out. Bye, David and Bill. Thanks for popping in. Appreciate it. Then I have, um, I just decided to try this because he was only 50 cents. I don't know if you guys remember, I'm really old. <laughs> so Oriental Trading was like a catalog, a book where you could order um, prizes and decorations and supplies for birthday parties. When I worked in the recreational therapy side of things in the nursing homes, we used to order from there when we did parties. So I don't know. I just decided I'd try it since he had that on his tag. The package was ticking. That's so funny. It's not funny, but it is. It is. Oriental trading still exists, huh? Who knew? Um, this is from PJ Masks, which is a kid's show. I um, don't know who the character is, but it's easy enough to find out. You guys... Mm -hmm. You can take a picture of a plush and go to Google image search and put the picture in and search that way. And it will pull up similar pictures for you. And then and you can usually find your plush that way. 
and click on the photos that are similar or the same, and it'll tell you who it is. You can also search, you know, with your keywords good on eBay, PJ Masks, screen character, or whatever. I had a red one before. Swimmer, Lizard Boy, Swimmer. <laughs> um, cool. This is, um, I know her name, it's L Lammy. This is Lammy from Doc McStuffins. Doc McStuffins is a show I have never seen. I never even heard of Doc McStuffins. Let me just fling my lamb around. Until I started doing plush. And um, I have a hippo that actually Bill and Dave gave me. They brought a hippo here the last time they visited me. Uh, Gnome and the Frog. They brought me a hippo present. And she looked like a little chef. But we later found out she's a nurse. But she's still my little chef hippo. Um, but yeah, I never heard of Doc McStuffins until I started selling plush. And my Doc McStuffins fly out the door. You guys probably see them in my What Sold videos, like several a week. If I have them in stock, if I find them and they're listed, several a week will move. And so I'm learning all the characters from a show I've never even seen or heard of until I started selling the plush. So this is Lammy. Look for those Doc McStuffins characters. Um, somebody said gecko. So this is just a Beanie Boo Rebel. Does not have glitter eyes. Glitter eyes make them more valuable. Um, but I'll grab them when they're only 50 cents. I'm going to have to be really careful. I hate when they put the tag on the tag because I don't want to mess them up. He already had a tag on his face. And they felt the need to put a second tag over here. I don't know. Anyway, his name's Rebel. He is um, possibly a meerkat. Let me see if his tag tells me. My home in Africa is very nice. I've even seen lions once or twice. I'm assuming that he's a meerkat. Anyway, I always grab the beanie boos. Not the beanie babies, the beanie boos when I see them for 50 cents. We got a couple more to go here, guys. And then we'll let you get back to work. I grabbed this bunny because it is realistic. It is not a good, uh, well-known or good brand or anything like that. It's just a realistic stuffed animal. And I tell you guys that these realistic looking stuffed animals do really well regardless of brand. You want to put realistic in the, in the title and the keywords. So this I would list as um, Easter Parade, um, Bunny, I don't know how big it is, but say it's 12 inches, 12 inch plus realistic stuffed animal with carrot. Um, but yeah, these do really well. And you can charge more. You can buy list realistic ones really high. How fun is he? He's so fun. This is the official Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer. He was actually 99 cents. Um... I think I paid 99 cents for him. I don't think he was in the 50 cent bin. He is um, going to require some testing. I'm going to have to get a little screwdriver, open him up, and make sure he doesn't have any battery corrosion, put some batteries in him, and test him out. And then we have a Thai Dora Del Tennis. Oops. There we go. This is um, a cute Dora the Explorer with a tennis racket in her hand and a little tennis outfit. So I decided for 50 cents, she was coming home with me. I got this camel. He's Dakin. You guys, I recently sold a Dakin tabby cat for like 30 bucks. Um, but it was a pretty large, realistic-looking tabby cat. So I decided to bring the camel home. He's not as realistic, but I'll still probably use that as a keyword. And then we have two left. If you have any questions, throw them in the chat now so I can get to them after I show you these two before I go. Again, these last two, if you um, saw the... Um, 
first battle I was in last night. I never got to show this guy or talk about him because um, he would have been round five, which we didn't get to. But um, I do have the Holy Grail. The Holy Grail of plush. Look at this. This is a rainbow zebra. It's actually called the maypole zebra because it has the ribbons just like the maple. And he's colorful and he's striped and he's jelly cat. So this is a really nice find, especially for 50 cents, right? Um, I have him down that I was going to start him at around 40 or 45 dollars. I really want 40 for him. It's kind of high if you look at comps, but I don't care. You guys know how I am. I want 40 for him. And I feel like when you solidly feel something, you got a price higher than that. Um, because if I start at 40, then I'm probably going to end up taking a best offer of 30 or 35, right? So if I want 40, I got to start him at like 45. So I have some wiggle room. And he'll probably go up on um, Poshmark for even more when I get around to cross-posting him. So that is a jelly cat zebra. He will be listed for around 45. Hey, little star picker. Welcome in. Yeah, Dakin is a really good brand. And the camel's cute. And he's the camel's one of those rare animals that's not oversaturated that's harder to find. And somebody out there likes camels. And they're not going to, um, they're, he's going to go for a little bit more because they're not as common. An elf plush. That's awesome. I've only ever found one elf plush ever. He had a surfboard. I believe he was a Burger King toy. Um, I have never had a pokey or a plush with melted can candle wax on it. I'm yawning. I'm so sorry. It's not you guys. It's rainy and gray here. <laughs> um, I've never, I've never dealt with that. Does anybody in the chat know how to get candle wax off? Great. So this little guy, he's Fiesta. Can you see that? Which is a meh, a meh, a whatever meh. Not that great brand. Um, but I pick up Fiesta from time to time, depending on the animal, because it's not always about the brand. Sometimes it's about the animal itself. So the reason I snagged this red panda is because, one, red pandas are not common. They are not oversaturated. They are one of those more um, rare animals to find listed. Um, but they're also popular. I know a lot of people that really like these little guys. They're so super cute. We have one at the zoo that I absolutely am in love with. Um, and it's realistic and it's large. So it's a realistic plush. The realistic animals do well. He's pretty big. So cute. So regardless of the fact that his brand Fiesta is kind of meh, I picked him up for 50 cents. I have already comped him and decided what I'm listing him for because, again, he went to the thrift battle with me, although he didn't make it into the show. Um, I'm going to list him somewhere between 50 and 60. And, again, that's going to depend on how much he weighs. He is pretty big. But when I take his photograph um, – take his photograph when I take photos for his photo shoot um I'll weigh him if he's over a pound he will have to ship in a box um and I will charge like I'll start him out at like 50 with calculated shipping but if he's lighter I'm probably gonna try to sell him more for like 55 60 free ship so that's my big red panda that I was so excited to find because I knew that he would go up for a lot of money regardless of his brand. All right, let's catch up with the chat and then I'm going to let you guys get back to work. Um, Ron, the hot iron and paper bag trick. Never heard of that. That's pretty cool. Rhonda Amelia, we sold a jelly cat. Love you, but I can't remember how much it sold for. It was over 40 
Yeah, Jelly Cat is a brand that you guys want to keep your eyes peeled out for. I've only ever found two ever in the wild. Um, they're hard to find. I don't see them that often. Um, Lone Star Picker. I use a cotton rag and lightly iron over the surface of the object with the rag cloth you can dispose. It pulls up wax on it. That's a really good tip. Thank you. You can try that on your plush. Had a famous red panda that would escape the DC Zoo on a regular basis. Was always in the news. That's so cute. They are really cute. Red pandas are adorable. Um, more advice from Lone Star Picker to be careful. Try with a double layer and cover the other parts of the plush if you are trying to get wax ironed out. The red panda is one of the most popular at ours, too. I'm sure he'll go fast. Yeah, he's really popular at ours as well. Um, they have his exhibit is set up so that it comes out into the people and like this little narrow box where it can interact with you. And he'll put his little hands on the class and he'll look at you. He's so stinking cute. I can't stand him. He's so cute. They're like raccoons, but not. I don't know. They're cute. Um, I did not win last night. So, wasn't me. Uh, thanks, Star. That's what I was thinking. Don't know if Gugan would work. I don't know if I would, if I've ever tried that on cloth or plush. All right, guys. That's everything. 24 new friends came home with me. And then I got two new pairs of jeans. Two pairs of jeans new with tags and a really nice Peter Millar shirt and only spent $20.49 on all 27 items. Very excited to get all these plush photographed tonight and get them listed um, throughout the weekend. I have some more plush I have as well that had to take a bath um, that just finally um, are ready for photos because I... Like I told you guys in the video, I put them through the wash and let them air dry. I have a big old stitch from Lilo and Stitch. I have a whole bunch of friends waiting for me. So I'll be working on plush for the next couple of days, which makes me really happy because it's my favorite thing to list and talk about and source and do videos on and photograph. From start to finish, from start to end, everything involved with plush, every kind of video you can make, just talking about plush makes me super happy. So I'm excited. Um, hey, Donatella, welcome in. I'm just wrapping up. You can watch the replay or just, you know, maybe pop in and say hi. Hello. Haven't seen you in a while either. Um, don't forget to hit the thumbs up on your way out, guys. It really helps the channel. If you haven't already and you'd like to, please subscribe and help us feed all our hungry hippos around here. If you guys need me for anything, you can always come back to the video later and leave a comment. I do respond to all comments on the channel. Um, best way to get a hold of me is to join the Facebook group. Down below is the link to join. It is free. Or you can find me on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and um, I'm at Flippin' Hippos everywhere. Uh, do I want? No, I do not put them in a mesh laundry bag. I just throw them in just how they are. Um, have a great rest of the afternoon, you guys, as well. Hi, Trina. Um, thank you. You know it's cute. You're so sweet. So, you guys, go be productive. Go make some money. And... Uh, Thanks so, so much for watching. As always, you guys are the best. Bye. I can't end and wave at the same time. Bye.